Hello everyone. So today I'm going to discuss palpitations and what are the different types of situations that you can uh, face with these symptoms and how to manage uh, each of the situation and the absolute essential points that you cannot you know, forget. Okay, so whenever a patient presents to you with palpitations, there can be different types of situations and depending upon each of uh, each different type of patients, you are going to either reassure the patient, you are going to advise lifestyle modification, or you are going to refer, or you are going to admit, okay? So according to NICE CK's guidelines, there are basically four different type of situations, okay? Number one is any patient with danger signs, okay? Any patient with palpitations plus danger signs. What you are going to do? You are going to either admit or immediately refer. Okay. Now, this admission or immediate referral, it will depend upon where you are, okay? If you are in the a &E, then you are going to admit this patient. If you are in the GP, you are going to call the ambulance and immediately take this patient to the hospital. If you are in the GP, but the patient is not face-to-face, -face, the patient is on video call or the patient is on phone call, then you are going to send ambulance to the patient's home to pick the patient and take them to the hospital. And what are basically the danger signs? These are four signs that you need to look for chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, and disease. Okay, so if you are getting any of these symptoms along with palpitation, you are going to this patient is high risk. You are going to admit or you are going to immediately refer. Okay. So the second type of situation is the patient does not have any danger signs. So no danger signs. But patient have palpitations at the moment. Okay. Patients have palpitation at the moment, um, and there is history of sudden cardiac deaths in the family. Okay. or the patient himself has history of heart disease, like ischemic heart disease. All right, or you have done an ECG and the ECG shows ventricular tachycardia or sustained SVT, okay? Then this patient you are also going to refer immediately or you're going to admit. So basically the same management. Okay. This any patient with danger signs you are going to immediately refer or admit. Now, what about the patient with no danger signs? So you are going to ask. Do you have any palpitations at the moment? This is basically going to be your first question. When a patient tells you, Bumper, I have some funny sensation in my chest, or I have palpitation. So next question that you are going to ask, do you have any palpitations at the moment? Okay, this is a very, very important question. And then you are going to proceed with your history, ask your differentials, and in the family history, you will ask any history of certain cardiac deaths in the family, okay? So any of these points, history of sudden cardiac deaths in the family or a patient himself is a heart patient or you've done an ECG and you found there is ventricular tachycardia or there is sustained supraventricular tachycardia, okay? 
Um, no, the, doing the ECG will depends upon the setting. If you are in the GP, you can, and the patient has come to the GP clinic, you can do an ECG. Okay, but if the patient has called you and he is your phone or your video call, then you cannot do an ECG. Then you will, you are going to refer him based on you know, only the history of sudden cardiac deaths in the family or only history of heart disease because you have found out the main point here is finding out. Um, whether you can classify uh, according to the risk, okay? So this person is also very high risk. You are going to either immediately refer if you are in the GP or you are going to admit if you are in the hospital. Okay, the third category is, let me just change the page. So, the third category of patients is basically these patients are basically intermediate risk patients. So, um, they don't have any history. Of sudden cardiac deaths in the family. No danger signs either. But um, you have done an ECG and the ECG is not normal. ECG is not normal. Okay. So the ECG might show you no know, atrial flutter. Okay. Um, or you know, non sustained SOT. So the ECG is not normal, but the ECG does not show ventricular tachycardia or sustained supraventricular tachycardia because as you all know, ventricular tachycardia is, is a high risk patient and also sustained supraventricular tachycardia is a high risk patient. So the ECG is not normal, but the ECG is not very really high risk, okay? And the patient does not have any history of sudden cardiac deaths in the family. The patient does not have any valid signs. The patient might have a history of, you know, uh, yeah, and the patient does not have, you know, any stresses. The patient does not consume a lot of caffeine. So this is basically your intermediate risk patient, which you are going to refer, but not immediately. Refer, but you know, this is your routine referral to cardiologist. And then the fourth is very low risk patient. Okay, so um, they obviously do not have any danger signs. So no danger signs. No family or personal history of heart disease. Okay. ECG is normal or shows premature ventricular contractions. So premature ventricular contractions are you know, um, when the ventricle contracts before it's normal contracting you know, where it is supposed to contract it contract a little bit before that, okay? So you can find premature ventricular contractions in the ECG, but they're not, you know, very sustained. So there is one PVC or maybe two PVC or three PVC in the entire ECG strips, but never more than three, okay? So the ECG is normal or it either shows premature ventricular contractions. So no danger sign, no family history or personal history of heart disease. ECG normal or shows premature ventricular contraction. 
and uh, the fourth point is there is history of uh, excessive caffeine consumption. Consumption or acute stress. No acute stress. For example, an exam or you know an injury. All right. So these patients, what you are going to do, you are going to reassure them and advise lifestyle modification. No need to admit. No need to refer. Okay. So you will ask them to decrease their caffeine consumption. You will ask them to do some relaxation techniques. Okay. But no need to send them anywhere. All right. So basically, the first two categories and the fourth category, these are very important because in the exam, they don't give you something which is, you know, intermediate or something which is very weak uh, because they want you to be very clear. Okay. So um, the most important, you know, the most important patients are either high risk, very high risk or either very low risk. Okay, so um, more likely than not, you are either going to immediately refer or admit or you are going to reassure. So keep these points in mind and I hope it was helpful. And I will uh, see you in the next video.